This is examples part two. So this example says use left and right end points and the given number of rectangles to find two approximations of the area of the region between the graph of the function and the x axis over the given interval. So here's the function they gave us. Well, that's a downward parabola shifted up five. So if I draw that and the x values are zero to two. So here's one, here's two. If I plug in zero for x, I get one, two, three, four, five. If I plug in one for x, I will get negative one plus five, which is four. And then if I plug in two for x, I will get negative four plus five, which is one. So your function looks like a downward parabola like this. Sorry if I didn't go exactly through those numbers, but it's cut off here, okay? So this is the x-axis and this is the region. And then I have between zero and two. So this is the area in which they're asking me to calculate. Now, if you notice, this does not follow any of our typical geometrical shapes. It's not necessarily a semicircle or a quarter of a semicircle. It's not exactly a, a trapezoid because this side's not flat. Um, it's not exactly a triangle. So it doesn't fit any of our geometrical shapes. But what we can do is we can find an approximation of it, okay? And so the way you find the approximation of it is you draw rectangles, okay? And these rectangles have to have what's called left endpoints and right endpoints. Now I want five rectangles within this whole thing because that's what it's telling me. So if I wanna figure out what the increments need to be because they should be of equal width, okay? Um, we need to go figure that out. So the way you calculate the width of each rectangle is going to be B minus A over N where B and A is your interval, A, B, and N is the number of rectangles, okay? So in our case, our end uh, point X value is two, the end of our interval, and the beginning of our interval is zero. And the number of rectangles I need is five, which means I get two fifths, or as a decimal value, um, 0.4 which means I'm going to break up this graph into 0.4 units. So here this is 0.4, here this is 0.8, I'm going to erase the 1 for now so it's not in my way, here this is 1.2, then 1.6, and then finally I get to the value 2. So these are all the values that I have here, okay? Um, this big marker there being the value at 1, but I don't need that value just yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that to draw a rectangle. Now, the first set of rectangles that I'm going to draw, I'm going to draw in um, purple here. So when I draw these rectangles, I'm going to get left endpoints, which means the left side of my rectangle is going to touch the graph. So if I draw this line straight away, it goes like this. Then between 0 0.4, here's where I touch the graph. And I know this does not look symmetrical because I should have the same widths. Um, I do have to go all the way up here to hit that height. Then 0 0.8 touches the graph here. So I have to go all the way to that height. And then 1.2 touches the graph here. So this rectangle has to go all the way to that height. And then at 1.6, I touch the graph here. And then this rectangle has to go all the way to that height. So notice that for each one of these rectangles, the um, height of the rectangle is at the left endpoint. Okay. So the left endpoint is what's touching the graph. So the purple is what's called the left in points. Okay, now if I want to find the total area, what I need to do is I need to find the area of the first rectangle plus the area of the second rectangle plus the area of the third rectangle and the fourth and the fifth. Okay, and then how do I calculate those areas? Well, one thing that we're going to need 
for all of these values is those y values. So we've got all of these numbers here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find y values for each one of these numbers. Okay, so I'm going to find g of 0 and I'll decide which of them I need in a minute. But for right now, I'm just going to find all of the values. I'm going to put this one up there just so it's not bleeding into my to my work over there. So each one of these increments is what I'm using to find the y values. And how do I find the y values? I plug them into my function. So I'm going to program my function first. Negative x squared plus 5. Ignore the first value. I think I plugged in 0 last for x. But let's just be sure and plug that in, hit enter, we do get 5, 0 0.4 store x, plug that in, we get 4.84, 0 0.8 store x, plug that in, we get 4.36, 1.2 store x, plug that in, we get 3.56, 1.6 store x, um, we get 2.44 and then 2 store x. I should end up with 1 because I've already plugged that number in. Yep, and I get 1. Okay, so for the left hand endpoints, what's happening is, is I've got to find the area for each rectangle. So I end up with the area for this first rectangle. Well, I know the width is 0 0.4 units. But the height is going to be this y value here, which is g of 0, which happens to be 5. Then the area of the second rectangle. Again, the width is only 0 0.4 units. But the height comes from this dot here, which is g of 0 0.4, 4.84. The third rectangle, again, the width is 0 0.4. But the height of this middle rectangle comes from that endpoint, which is g of 0 0.8, 4.36 here. The fourth rectangle, again, the width is 0 0.4 units. If you take the bigger x value minus the lower x value, you get this width here. And then the height is this y value here, g of 1.2, which is 3.56. And then finally, my last rectangle, again, the width is 0.4 because we designed it that way, right, for all of them to have the same width. And the height comes from this y value, g of 0.16, I'm sorry, g of 1.6, which the y value is 2.44. So if I go here and I calculate these values, let's see. Um, I think I can type everything in 0 0.4 times 5 plus 0.4. 4 times 4.84 plus 0.4 times 4.36 plus 0.4 times 3.56 plus 0.4 times 2.44 and I end up with um hmm may have had a typo let me see oh that's why 2.44 there we go so 8.08. .08. Now, um, I don't know what the units are here. They didn't give me any units. So it would be units squared. But since we don't know them, we'll just leave that there. Now, this, because you notice that the rectangles go a little bit over the graph, this is what's called an upper sum. Okay. The value of this estimate is going to be over the the actual value okay and that means it's going to be higher than the actual area so we call it the upper sum now what I'm gonna do in another color um, let me get red because red will stand out is I'm gonna do the right hand right in points okay so I'm gonna draw my rectangles again they're gonna have the same point for um, width but this time I'm going to draw them hitting the endpoints. So 
let's go ahead and draw that. So this one here, it's not going to hit the graph on the left, it's going to hit the graph on the right. And so then here is my rectangle. Then the second rectangle is going to hit the graph on the right. So I'm going to go across this way. Then the third is going to hit the graph on the right hand side. So it looks like this. The fourth on the right hand side. So it looks like this. If I had drawn them with equal width it would have looked a lot better. And then the last rectangle. Okay. So notice that here we're underneath the graph, which means that this estimate is actually going to be lower than the actual area. So when I'm done here, that's actually going to be called the lower sum. Okay, But the same technique applies. You're going to take the area of all five rectangles to find the estimate. So my area is going to be the widths are still all the same, 0.4 units. But if I look at this one, the height comes from this y value, which is g of 0 0.4, which is 4.84. Width is the same for the second rectangle, but the height comes from 0 0.8, which is 4.36. The third rectangle, still 0 0.4 width, but the height comes from g of 1.2, 3.56. The fourth rectangle has a 0 0.4 width and a height of g of 1.6, which is 2.44. And finally, the last rectangle has a width of 0 0.4 and a length of this y value, which is one. So if I calculate all of these in there, I'm going to do um, 0.4 times 4.84 plus 0.4 times 4.36 plus 0.4 times 3.56 plus 0.4 times 2.44 plus 0.4 times 1. And we get um, 6.64 Or no, I'm sorry, I had a dyslexic moment. My calculator does not say that, right? It says 6.464. Okay, so then that means, let me make sure I did that right. Uh, let me just double check. So 4.84, then 4.36, then 3.56, then 2.44, then 1. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It comes out to 6.48. Okay. So that is going to be called my lower sum. So these are just estimates, right? What that means is that my actual area is going to be less than 8.08, .08, but it's going to be more than 6.48, okay? So you're always gonna put your lower sum on this side of the inequality, and then your area, and then your upper sum on this side of the inequality. And they will want you to fill in the inequality inside the web assign. Okay, so this is going to give us an estimate. It would be safe to say that it's probably going to be seven point something, um, that actual area. But we just don't know what exactly. We just know that it's between these two um, values.